Hey folks, Randy here doing cut and trim. So um, I've got quite a few uh, GIE related videos that are still going to get posted. Uh, I think I've got, um, yeah, like <laughs> a lot. Um, but uh, I, w I was thinking about what were my major takeaways from uh, GIE this year and uh, actually took notes. Um, and so I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about them and not really any particular order. But uh, these were just a couple of the takeaways that I got from uh, attending the GIE. Um, the inventions, first off. The inventions that were there were very cool. Um, they're very creative people that were there. And you got to see the substance of their creativity, which I, I really enjoyed. Uh, there was a guy there who had modified his zero-turn mower so that he could either steer it with his wrists or his feet. Um, you know, that's just, that's just kind of neat. You know, like there was a guy there that, uh, they'd made it so a, an electric motor with trim line on it, you know, could come out and trim while you're mowing. I mean, just, you know, like interesting things like the roto shovel where, you know, there's an auger attached to a shovel. Just interesting, cool thing. The KR chariot, you know, just interesting, cool things. And so what, like, honestly, one of the best parts of going to, uh, uh, GIE was um, getting to see those kind of odd, you know, interesting things. Like, you know, putting, like, who would have thought to put a front-end loader on a zero-turn motor? You know, well, Rob Zurob did, you know, and he, you, it was there, and you got to see that on a previous video. So it was really cool getting to see inventors put their things on display. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, so that's probably... That, that's that's in my top two things that were great about going to uh, GIE. Um, getting to put my hands on equipment was fantastic. I loved being able to do that, even equipment that I'm not going to purchase. You know, I got I got to ride a uh, I got to ride on a battery powered stand on mower from Greenworks Commercial. I can't afford that thing. It's like twenty grand. I'm not buying that. Not at least not anytime soon. But uh, getting the experience of that was, it was really cool, you know, it was really enjoyable. Uh, pretty much any machine you wanted to run, uh, you could run at this uh, event, you know. I mean, even those uh, mowers with the tank treads on them, you could run those. So that was pretty cool, getting to get a hands-on experience with the equipment. Another takeaway that I had, uh, and this is going to be like, I guess, the one negative, um, is that uh, GIE, if you want to have a good time or if you want to interact with people, the big brands really aren't for you. Um, when I was going through the big brand booths, most of the time, I was just completely ignored. Um, none of the people that worked there, and I'm not going to call out any of the brands specifically, but uh, name, a, name a large company, and that's who I'm talking about. Um, you know, walking through their booths, you know, the uh, employees were more interested in just talking to each other uh, as opposed to interacting with me. There was one booth in particular I went to that I saw a mower that I just thought was really cool. And uh, so I started goofing around with it and there were three employees standing within four feet of me. And uh, I was like, I was starting to wonder, I was like, how long is it gonna take for somebody to come over and talk? Cause I was genuinely interested in this machine. I don't know, I stood there three or four minutes they just continued on with their conversation and that was my experience throughout uh the going through like the larger booths i would say with the only exception i would say is uh the right manufacturing booth i felt like those folks were very engaged and i i, I really appreciated that um the, if you wanted engagement, it was actually the smaller vendors who seemed to care much more. I spent a lot of time at the Bradley booth. We need to do a video about that. And uh, they um, they were very engaged and they were very interested in answering my questions or finding the answer if they didn't know. Um, <clears throat> the uh, other thing that actually this was probably the coolest part of being there was I got to meet a lot of people. Not only did I get to meet a lot of the subscribers that watch my videos, um, which was really, really cool for me getting to meet you guys. Um, but I also got to meet a lot of the folks that I'm subscribed to, you know? Um, and I, you know, 
I don't know if this is universally true uh, or if it was just true with the people that I like. Uh, but what was really cool to me was, uh, you know, you watch somebody's videos, you watch a lot of their videos, and you start you start to get a sense for who they are. And uh, but the question is, is this actually is this actually who they are, or is this just who they're presenting? You know, I, I've gotten to meet. Um, some celebrities of varying degrees of fame and uh, a lot of them uh, they per give off a persona but when you meet them in real life that's not who they actually are um, and that can be very that can be disappointing but the cool thing about the guys in the lawn care industry at least the guys that I met the YouTube personalities specifically is uh, it seems like they do come from a place of genuinely wanting to help people. Um, I can and and so who they are in the videos is who they seem to be in real life. Uh, Nailer with uh, lawn, uh, lawn Care Rookie. If you see his videos, I mean that's him. You know, uh, Julio Tomei from the Lawn Care Business Success Podcast. He was exactly the way you'd expect him to be. Um, Blake Hawthorne with It's His Turf, you know, in his videos, he comes across as a very genuine person. And I can tell you, in real life, he came across as a very genuine person. Um, when I, I felt like, I, it was one of those weird things where it was like, I was thinking like, this guy's gonna think I'm stalking him because, <laughs> because I, I feel like I saw uh, Blake probably like 15 times over the course of that show. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, I talked to him twice, but I just felt like every time I turned around, I saw him and he was constantly being approached by people and people were talking to him. And every time I was within earshot, he was giving in-depth, uh, useful information to in response to questions that he was asked. He's a very, very genuine guy. I was I was very impressed because I was really nervous that he was not going to be as great in person as he appears to be in his videos. <laughs> but just very good dude. And then, of course, uh, Brad with Copper Creek Cuts, who actually I ended up talking to for a very long time. And, um, you know, Brad, another guy. I mean, the guy that you see in his videos, pretty much the dude that's right there in front of you. I mean, just so it was very cool uh, getting to meet all these people. Um, you know, there was a bunch of other YouTube personalities that were there that I, I didn't really care if I met them or not. Um, of the guys that I wanted to meet, um, I met most of them. The guys that, and you know, there was actually a bunch that I wanted to meet that didn't go to GIE. And, you know, is what it is. Um, but it was, you know, it was just great getting that uh, interaction. But um, the one thing I did realize is I'm not as engaged in the lawn care community as I probably should be um, I, uh, I I found myself interacting with several people uh, who knew who I was um, but I didn't know who they were and of course you know that was vice versa there was a bunch of people I introduced myself to that they had no clue who I was and that's just you know that's just par for the course but uh, I found myself I, I really real I realized that you know like you think people you it's kind of a dumb thing to say but you think nobody's watching your stuff um, but it turns out they are and they're paying attention and it feels strange to know people are paying attention to me but I'm not paying giving them the same level of attention um, and so that's something I'm I'm working harder on as a result is trying to be more engaged with the people that are here so that I can provide more benefit to them in return. Um, I receive a lot of benefit from this community as so I want to make sure, I hate using that term community, but you know, for lack of a better word, um, I really want to be able to return that favor uh, to folks that have been helpful to me. Um, <clears throat> the last thing I guess I would say in this, you know, is uh, I didn't realize just how much the brands are paying attention to what you say online. Um, if you guys have seen my uh, Cujo Yardware uh, video, um, the owner, uh, to his credit, knew exactly who I was and walked right up to me when uh, I went to his booth. And honestly, I didn't think he would have any clue who I was. 
I really didn't think he would, uh, but he did. And so that was another major takeaway is that these brands are paying attention. You know, they're hearing what you have to say. They're hearing your feedback and they're, uh, uh, if not acting on it, at least taking note of it. And so it was very eye-opening experience in that way, but I really want to get more involved and engaged in uh, the lawn care business community um, so that not only can I learn more, um, but also that I can be more benefit to everyone else. Um, so those were the big takeaways for me at the GIE. Uh, also, I, another takeaway, this is kind of a goofy one that I'm not going to do anything about, but I also realized that if you wanted to know where people were, you kind of needed to be on Instagram. <laughs> Apparently, I could have met a lot more people if I had just looked on Instagram and saw what they were doing, but, you know, that's not worth it to me. Um, you know, actually, I'm, I was almost debating. Uh... All right, I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. If you stay till the end, you'll get to see this. Uh... So over the last couple uh, months, there has been trouble brewing, you know, in the lawn care community, specifically between one channel against two other channels. <laughs> and there was going to be a, you know, there was the possibility of a showdown at GIE. Well, apparently they did see each other. And you know what happened? Not a thing. Nothing. It's all a bunch of hot air. All it was. Nothing. Not a thing. <laughs> and if you don't know what I'm talking about, sorry, I'm not going to tell you. But if you do know what I'm talking about, nothing happened. Everybody talks often. Everybody talks a big game online, but uh, when it's time to actually put your money where your mouth is, you know, nothing happened. <laughs> I'm going to end it there, or else I'm going to end up like actually giving my honest opinion about that. And I'd just rather keep that to myself. But uh, love professional wrestling. Dang it, I said it. Uh, this is Randy with Dolan Cut and Trim. Have a good one.